So when Holy Spirit said, go release the hovering, I knew he was saying, I'm about to bring forth the spirit of awakening in the nation, gather my people and release my hovering. So that's what we're doing. This is not happening, by the way, just because Chuck and Dutch show up. It's happening because we, we, we have a, a calling and an anointing and a gift and a recognition that can gather the intercessors in the nation. We can gather the prophetic company in the nation. So as we gather and release our faith together, this hovering begins. And the third thing he said very quickly, the Holy Spirit said, release the anointing to give birth. So we're going to do that. And I'm just going to quickly here, about five more minutes, I'm going to share from Acts chapter 3. And then I'm going to read this dream. I've had two dreams. I'm in a season where I'm receiving dreams weekly for the nation. Most of them, I don't have the dream. They're sent to me from prophets. And the dreams that are being given to me right now from these prophets are incredibly significant, saying to me, we're moving into a season where it will be contested, what God's about to do. It's going to be contested in very um, dramatic and intense ways. But the victories that we experience will be dynamic victories. We will win. And God's about to birth what we've been asking him for for decade, two or three decades now. This great awakening is coming. And it is time. The two of the dreams I have turned in the dream and said to the people with me, it's time. Just say that with me right now. It's time. And I'm just going to mention Acts chapter 3 quickly because it's the only chapter I know of in Scripture where three of the Greek words for time in the New Testament are all used. There are three words. One is chronos, and most of you have probably heard that word. Chronos is a general season of time, and it's used when Peter was preaching in verse 21 of Acts 3. He uses the phrase times of restoration of all things. Restoration there is the word apokatastasis in Greek. It's, it's really restoration is not a strong enough word for us because it's an overused word that just kind of basically means somebody has had a hard time, but God comes and re refreshes and restores them. But this word is a word that means to reconstitute something. That's the best translation of the word, reconstitute. Constitution of something is, is the intent, the original intent for that, how it's made and how it operates, the constitution. Our nation is supposed to operate according to our constitution. Your body is supposed to work according to the constitution of the way it's made by God. So he says, the, there are, and the word is plural, it's not chronos, it's chronoi there. Times of the restoration of all things or the reconstituting of all things. So we go through seasons where God reconstitutes us in a certain way. And then we go through another season where he is reconstituting us. We go from glory to glory. We go to changed in his image from glory to glory. We go from faith to faith. And so every season he's doing something specific in a corporate sense and in an individual sense. Chuck prophesied tonight of us going, coming into a, a six month season to get us to a point of breakthrough moving in this new era. That's a chronos. But in every chronos, there are what? Kairoses. The word in Greek would be kairoi. And that's in verse 19. He says, in every season of reconstituting, you come to a kairos. And a kairos is a window of opportunity. That's the best way to translate it. A window of opportunity. Not a guaranteed time, but an opportune time. And we're in one now. We can break through into this new era. So he, he says there are seasons, 
Chronoi, and there are Kairos windows. But then you come to a point where you have to, you have to step through. You have to break through. You have to hear Holy Spirit saying, it's time. And that's in the first part of the chapter. When the man at Gate Beautiful was healed. God kept talking to me several years ago about this passage. And I knew he had something he wanted to share with me there. And I couldn't get it. I just couldn't figure out what he was saying to me. So finally, I started doing word studies of all the words in that passage. And I still wasn't getting it. So I finally looked up the word for the gate, the name of the gate, beautiful. And I realized that the word beautiful there doesn't mean attractive. It's not a physical beauty. It's actually the word horeos, which means the right time. The best translation would be the right time gate. It's only translated beautiful a couple of times because it's a circumstantial beauty. When things come together at the right time in the right way, it creates something beautiful. I had wondered for years why Jesus walked by this man dozens, if not hundreds of times because of where he was located and didn't heal him. It's one of the few times, one of the few people Jesus didn't heal. In fact, there were times when multitudes came to him, and that word means thousands and thousands, myriads of people would be around him, and he'd be teaching them, and the Bible says he healed them all. And I often wondered, why did he walk by this man and not heal him? And I'm sure the disciples wondered why. It was because Jesus was saving the miracle for the right time. He knew that the early church would need this miracle because the whole nation knew who this guy was. Because they had to go to Jerusalem three times a year for the feast and where he was located Sovereignly put there by God, sovereign, sovereignly sitting at a gate called the right time, time gate. And all of the nation knew him because they walked by him when they would come to Jerusalem. And he was so pathetic in his condition. Everyone knew who he was and they all had probably fipped him a coin or two. And then one day... Peter walked by and something was different. It was time. It was time. It was time for a miracle that would grab the attention of the entire nation. Now just think about that. Everybody knew who this guy was. And you can argue theology all you want when a guy who's 40 some years old, who's born with a condition that's twisted his limbs, he's never walked a day in his life. When something happens and in a second, muscles are formed, limbs are straightened, joints are put together, ligaments form, coordination comes and that which takes months to do to learn to walk happens in a fraction of a second and he jumps leaps to his feet and he's completely transformed and he's running through the temple and the whole city hears about it in minutes because thousands of people gathered we know five thousand were saved because he was running through the temple, running and leaping and praising God. And news spread throughout the entire region. Joe is over there running through the temple. What Joe? Joe, the, Joe, the one that sits at the gate called Beautiful at begging for alms. He's running and leaping and praising God. Somebody healed him in the name of this Jesus. The one they're saying rose from the dead. And a right time miracle happened at the right time gate. That's Horeos. Kronos, Kairos, and then the Lord says, 
it's time.